All right, so before I head out to the ice fields and search for Septimus and all that stuff, um, let's go ahead and... Go on in. We got warm food, warm drinks, and warm beds. Exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, the chair over here looks to be the perfect. Let's go ahead and read this book, Effects of the Elder Scrolls, since it's, you know, intelligible. So... Effects of the Elder Scrolls. It is widely known among scholars that the Elder Scrolls entail a certain hazard in their very reading. The mechanism for these effects has, at present, been largely unknown. Theories of hidden knowledge and divine retribution were the subject of idle speculation with little investigation. I, Justinus Polinius, have undertaken to thoroughly document the ailments afflicted by the Elder Scrolls on their readers, though a unified theory on how they manifest continues to elude me and remains a subject for future study. I have grouped the effects into four, finding that the avenue of experience depends largely on the mind of the reader. If this is unclear, I hope that a proper dichotomy will lay it plain. Group the first, the Nafes. For one who has received no training in the history or nature of the Elder Scrolls, the scroll itself is, effectively, inert. No prophecy can be scried nor knowledge obtained. While the scroll will not impart learning on the uninformed, nor will it afflict them in any adverse fashion. Visually, the scroll will appear to be awash in odd lettering and symbols. Those who know their astronomy often claim to recognize constellations in the patterns and connections, but such conjecture is impossible to further investigate since the very nature of this study necessitates unlearned subjects. Group the second, the unguarded intellects. It is this second group that realizes the greatest danger from attempting to read the scrolls. These are subjects who have an understanding of the nature of the Elder Scrolls, and possess sufficient knowledge to actually read what is inscribed there. They have not, however, developed adequate discipline to stave off the mind-shattering effects of having a glimpse of infinity. These unfortunate souls are struck immediately, irrevocably, and completely blind. Such is the price for overreaching one's faculties. Whether the future, the past, or the deep natures of being is dependent on the individual and their place in the greater spheres. But the knowledge does come. Group the Third Meditated Understanding Alone in Tamriel, it would appear that only the cult of the Ancestor Moth has discovered the discipline to properly guard one's mind while reading the scrolls. Their novitiates must undergo the most rigorous mental cultivation, and they often spend a decade or more in the monastery before being allowed to read their first Elder Scroll. The monks say this is for the initiate's own protection, as they must have witnessed many unguarded intellects among their more eager ranks. With appropriate fortitude, these readers also receive blindness, though at a far lesser magnitude than the unguarded. Their vision fogs slightly, but they retain shape, color, and enough acuity to continue to read mundane texts. The knowledge they gain from the scroll is also tempered somewhat. It requires stages of meditation and reflection to fully appreciate and express what one saw. Group the Fourth, Illuminated Understanding. Between the previous group and this one exists a continuum that has, at present, only been traversed by the monks of the Ancestor Moth. With continued reading, the monks become gradually more and more blind, but receive greater and more detailed knowledge. As they spend their waking hours pondering the revelations, they also receive a further degree of mental fortitude. There is, for every monk, a day of penultimate reading, when the only knowledge the Elder Scroll imparts is that the monk's next reading shall be his last. For each monk, the penultimate reading comes at a different and unknowable time. Preliminary work has been done to predict the occurrence by charting the severity of an individual monk's blindness, but all who reach these later stages report that the increasing blindness seems to taper with increased readings. Some pose the notion that some other unseen sense is, in fact, continuing to diminish in this upper range, but I shall leave such postulations to philosophers. To prepare for his ultimate reading, a monk typically withdraws to seclusion in order to reflect upon a lifetime of revelations and appoint his mind for the reception of his last. Upon this final reading, he is forever blinded, as sure as those unguarded ones who raced to knowledge. The Illuminated One, though, has retained his understanding over a lifetime, and typically possesses a more integral notion of what has been revealed to him. 
it is hoped that this catalog will prove useful to those who wish to further our mortal understandings of the Elder Scrolls. The Moth Priests remain aloof about these matters, taking the gradual debilitation that comes with reading as a point of pride. May this serve as a useful starting point for those hoping to take up such study. Dictated to Anistus Mectum, fourth of last seed in the 126th year of the Second Era. I know I've said it before, but this is one old text. Ooh, cold out there. Alright, Septimus is living in an ice cave. What in the... What the crap is this thing? By the beard of Talos. Septimus. Hey. Dig, Dwemer in the beyond. I'll know your lost unknown and rise to your depths. When the top level was built, eh? no more could be placed. It was and is the maximal apex. You must be Septimus Cygnus. You are a hard man to track down. What brings you out to this remote location in the middle of the sea of ghosts of all places? Ah, the ice entombs the heart. The bane of Kagranak and Degothur. To harness it is to know the fundaments. The Dwemer lockbox hides it from me. The Elder Scroll gives insight deeper than the Deep Ones, though, to bring about the opening. Wait, you're here because an Elder Scroll told you to come. Does does that mean you have it with you? I have seen enough to know their fabric, the warp of air, the weft of time. But no, it is not in my possession. S Septimus, you're um acting awfully odd. You all right? You didn't try to read that scroll, did you? I am well. I will be well. Well to be within the will inside the walls. Uh... Alright, I'll just take you at face value on that. So where is the Elder Scroll? Here. Well, here as in this plain. Mondas. Tamriel. Nearby. Relatively speaking. <laughs> On the cosmological scale, well, it's all nearby. That's nice and all, but cosmological is a bit big for me. What about on the me scale? How close is it to you and I? One block lifts the other. Septimus will give what you want, but you must bring him something in return. I see. A trade. What is it you need? You see this masterwork of the Dwemer, deep inside their greatest knowings. Septimus is clever among men, but he is but an idiot child compared to the dullest of the Dwemer. Lucky then they left behind their own way of reading the Elder Scrolls. In the depths of Black Reach, one yet lies. Have you heard of Black Reach? Cast upon where Drimmer City slept, the yearning spire hidden learnings kept. <laughs> Black Reach. If what you're after is in this Black Reach, where do I find it? Under deep, below the dark, the hidden keep. Tower Mazark. Oftan, the point of puncture, of first entry, of the tapping. Delve to its limits, and Black Reach lies just beyond. But not all can enter there. Only Septimus knows the hidden key to loose the lock to jump beneath the deathly rock. Uh. I assume if I need a key, you'll give it to me, right? Two things I have for you. Two shapes. One edged, one round. 
the round one for tuning. Dwemer music is soft and subtle, and needed to open their cleverest gates. The edged lexicon for inscribing. To us, a hunk of metal. To the Dwemer, a full library of knowings, but empty. Find Mazark and its Sky Dome. The machinations there will read the scroll and lay the lore upon the cube. Trust Septimus. He knows you can know. Okay, wait. Once more, what am I supposed to do with this sphere you just gave me? The deepest doors of Dwemer listen for singing. It plays the attitude of notes proper for opening. Can you not hear it? Too low for hearings? Oh, I see. This is a key to a tonal lock. All right, that makes much more sense. But what of this cube? You said it was a library empty for inscribing? I don't understand. How does this work? To glimpse the world inside an Elder Scroll can damage the eyes or the mind as it has to Septimus. The Dwemer found a loophole as they always do to focus the knowledge away and inside without harm. Place the lexicon into their contraption and focus the knowings into it. When it brims with glow, bring it back, and Septimus can read once more. Huh. So you're saying this lexicon is like a... a tablet. And you focus the power of the Elder Scroll onto it, and it etches what it would normally burn into your mind onto the cube. That's incredible. Look forward to seeing how this works. But Septimus, I have to ask, what do you need an Elder Scroll for? Why do you want what's in it inscribed on this cube in the first place? What do you need from it that would require you to go through all this trouble? Ooh, an observant one. How clever to ask of Septimus. This Dwemer lockbox. Look upon it and wonder. Inside is the heart. The heart of a god. The heart of you and me. But it was hidden away. Not by the dwarves, you see. They were already gone. Someone else, uh, unseen, unknown, found the heart, and with a flair for the ironical, used dwarven trickery to lock it away. The scroll will give the deep vision needed to open it. For not even the strongest machinations of the Dwemer can hold off the all sight given by an Elder Scroll. Wait. Septimus, you're telling me that the heart of Lorcan is inside of that cube behind you? By the Nine. I'd heard the stories about the Nerevarine, but. First Arniel, now you. I keep seeming to run into this. Wonder where this is gonna lead. Anyway, Septimus, before I go, there's one last thing I want to ask you. You said that you glimpsed into an Elder Scroll and it damaged your mind. That's not too big of a surprise to me at this point, but... As you've looked at one, what would you call an Elder Scroll? How would you... Well, how would you define its contents? You look to your left, you see one way. You look to your right, you see another. But neither is any harder than the opposite. But the Elder Scrolls, they look left and right in the stream of time. The future and past are as one. Sometimes they even look up. What do they see then? What if they dive in? Ah, then the madness begins. Uh... I see. 
Well then, Septimus, um, thank you for the insight. I'll be on my way, and hopefully you'll see me again whenever I fill this lexicon with the knowledge you need. Don't freeze to death up here till then. Okay, he's not gonna say anything. Um, I guess I'm gonna go head to Riften. I still need to talk to Maven. Tell her that I successfully finished the hunting brew job. If you've got the coin, you've come to the right place. Pull up a seat. Oh, so kind, even... Want a drink? So, um... Sure, Talon. Why not? I'm still interested in those drinks that you carry. The specialties. What do you have on tap right now? Depends. Are you thirsty? Hungry? Both? Well, I think that that'll about do it. I'll enjoy these in my own time, Talon. Thank you very much. Just get out of here. Oh, God. And he's still salty about what I did. Anyway, Maven. Maven. I trust you have good news for me? I do, Maven. Sabjorn is taken care of, and Malice Machius is now in charge of Hunting Brew Meadery West. He's setting it up as we speak. Not to mention, I managed to get into the books. Hopefully this document has what you need to know. This doesn't tell me much. The only thing that could identify Sabjorn's partner is this odd little symbol. Indeed. I've seen that symbol before, but I don't know who it belongs to. Well, whoever this mysterious marking represents, they'll regret starting a war with me. You should bring this information to the Thieves' Guild immediately. There's also the matter of your payment. I believe you'll find this more than adequate for your services. Thank you, Maven. It's been a pleasure. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business to take care of with the guild. I'm certain I'll see more of you in time. Out of my way. Ah, here we go. Delvin! Delvin! Hey! Bring your fight. Let me guess. He just plucked you off the street and dropped you into the thick of things without telling you which way is up. Am I right? That's pretty much exactly what he did. If you have advice, I wouldn't turn it down. See, that kind of attitude comes from someone who wants to get rich and stay alive long enough to enjoy it. We're gonna get along nicely. So, if you've got the nerve, I've got plenty of extra jobs to help get the guild back on its feet. Back on its feet? Are things really that bad around here? Look around you. The flagon. The guild. It's all falling apart. A few decades ago, this place was as busy as the Imperial City. Now, you'd be lucky if you don't trip over a skeever instead. What in oblivion happened? Why the hard times? Look, I know the others think I'm a bit dull for saying stuff like this, but I'm gonna give it you straight. Something out there is piss-drunk mad at us. I don't know who or what it is, but it's beyond just you and me. We've been cursed. A curse? How the hell do you even handle or manage a curse? I'll tell you what we do. We spit in that curse's face and turn things around down here. Put things back the way they were. That's where you come in. I've got plenty of work available that could guide us down the road to recovery. All you need to do is ask, and we can both come out of this smelling like a rose. I think we see eye to eye. But on the note of extra work, I managed to find a couple of things on the last few jobs I did. When I was doing the Golden Glow Estate job, going through the manor, I found this fancy little Queen Bee statue. Seemed rather unique. Thought you might be interested in it. And if that's not enough, I just got back from Hunting Brew Meadery. I was sorting a bit of a problem out for Maven there, and while I was taking care of business, I found this rather fancy decanter. I assumed these two things would interest you. Would they be worth anything? Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets like this, be sure to bring them to me. I promise it'll be worth the effort. I think you'll find this payment to be more than fair. Pleasure doing business, Delvin. I'll return whenever I have more. And sorry, but I can't take an extra job. I have larger fish to fry. 
The only way this guild's gonna continue to grow is by taking extra work. Brynjolf? Word on the street is that poor Sabjorn has found himself in White Run's prison. How unfortunate for him. Indeed. And yet for some strange reason, it seems to benefit Maven quite greatly. Exactly. Now you're beginning to see how our little system works. Maven sent word that you discovered something else while you were out there. Something important to the guild? Yeah. This is the paperwork from Sabjorn's desk. It's the only document that talks about where he got the money to buy the metery in the first place. I think you'll recognize the symbol at the top. Then this is beyond coincidence. First Arangoth, and now Sabjorn. Someone's trying to take us down by driving a wedge between Maven and the guild. Have any plans for what we do about it? Mercer thinks he knows a way to identify this new thorn in our side. He wants to meet with you right away. And if I were you, I'd hurry. I've never seen him this angry before. All right, Mercer. Ah, there you are. I've consulted my contacts regarding the information you recovered from Golden Glow Estate, but no one can identify that symbol. I hope you have some sort of plan, Mercer. Because the symbol seems to be following us around. The paperwork I got from the Hunting Brew Meadery carries the same mark. It would seem our adversary is attempting to take us apart indirectly by angering Maven Blackbriar. Very clever. You've got to be kidding me. You admire the person that's giving us trouble? They're well funded, and they've been able to avoid identification for years. I'm impressed it reached this point. Just don't mistake my admiration for complacency. Our nemesis is going to pay dearly. How are we supposed to do that? We don't even know who it is. Because even after all their posturing and planning, they've made a mistake. The parchment you recovered mentions a Gajal lie. According to my sources, that's an old alias used by one of our contacts. His real name is Gullum I. Slimy bastard. No doubt that's my next job. Where do I start? Gullum I is our inside man at the East Empire Company in Solitude. I'm betting he acted as a go-between for the sale of Golden Glow Estate and that he can finger our buyer. Get out there, shake him down, and see what you come up with. Talk to Brynjolf before you leave if you have any questions. I can't believe Gullum Eye's mixed up in all this. That Argonian couldn't find his tail with both hands. Don't get me wrong, he could scam a beggar out of his last septum. But he's no mastermind. How much trouble do you think he'll give me when I go for him? Trouble? Huh. He's one of the most stubborn lizards I've ever met. You have your work cut out for you. How do you suggest I get him to talk? You're going to have to buy him off. It's the only way to get his attention. If that fails, follow him and see what he's up to. If I know Gollum I, he's in way over his head, and you'll be able to use it as leverage. Well, he certainly is going to owe us a lot with this little jig he's been playing. Aye, he does indeed. And with his fingers in the East Empire Company's pie, we'll make good use of that debt. If I'm not being clear enough, that means we don't want him killed. For now, just keep on his tail and he's bound to step into something he can't scrape off his boot. No worries, Brynjolf. I know all too well how valuable an asset can be. But if I get information from Gullamai, what then? Just head right back to the guild and get the information to Mercer. Nothing else is more important. If you discover Gullamai is holding out on us and has more loot stashed away than he claims, we'd find that information quite valuable as well. Will do. But what do you think Gullamai is going to do whenever I confront him about this? What should I look out for? There are thieves, and then there is Gullamai. No honor, no code at all. He'd shake your hand and stab you in the back at the same time. The cut he's supposed to provide the guild has dwindled as of late. He says pickings in the warehouse are slim, but I'm certain he's lying. Keep your eyes on him. He's quite crafty. Warehouse. Where does he work, anyway? He must have access to a significant horde for us not to want him dead, especially after what he's done. Gullamai works in the East Empire Company warehouse. 
He helps maintain all of the shipments of goods that goes in and out of solitude. That means he has the pick of the litter from some of the finest goods to grace Skyrim's shores. He isn't exactly in the guild, but he pays us a cut of all the stuff he lifts from the warehouse. The, the East Empire Company. I know about them, but I've never really looked into them very heavily. Who are they? A mercantile group that has established ports all over Tamriel. They pretty much dominate the whole shipping industry. The Emperor himself supposedly backs them, which means they have fairly unlimited resources. So don't get their feathers in a ruffle. Wonderful. Don't disturb the status quo, but also get things back to normal. Wish me luck, Brynjolf. I'm off to solitude. Good luck in solitude. Keep Golomai alive, but remind him who we are. Need something? All right, where is she? Vex, Vex, Vex. Here we go, Vex. Hey, Vex. So, feeling loose? How about you run a job for me? Not this time, Vex. I'm here looking for information about a particular person. Heard she came by talking to you. Isabel Rolaine. What do you know? Who's asking? I have my own reasons to find her. But what initially set me to this was a man named Randmere. Not him again. He came nosing around Riften a while back, making a lot of noise about me. He was persuaded to leave before he found me. Funny. I'd have thought she would have gone back to him by now. Gone back? So you have seen her. What happened? She came through a while ago. Wanted to know where she could get her hands on something valuable. Anything, really. I told her it was a bad idea. That she wasn't cut out for what would be necessary, but she wouldn't hear it. So, I gave her some advice, pointed her towards Hobbs Fall Cave, and that was that. Hobbs Fall Cave. Pretty simple and straight. I guess I'll have to go back to Winterhold to find out more. Thanks, Vex. And no, I don't want an extra job before I go. Hey, I still have plenty of work to do here. As you always do, Vex, but that has nothing to do with me. Alright, let's get out of here. I've had enough of Riften. Every single time I come back to talk to the Thieves' Guild, they just pin, like, they, 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 they practically put nails through my toes and keep me here. <clears throat> I just, if there's too, marksman oh, training, too much talking. Too much talking in one shot. In some marksman training. And they stalk me too! For God's sake. Oh, this is the first time that I think I've used the, uh... Yeah, sure enough, this is the first time that I've used the back door to get into the Thieves' Guild. Right. Well, then, um... You know what? First things first, let's go ahead and, uh... I don't know if I have any diseases on me. It's always important to use those shrines. Anyway, let's clear out of here, and... I don't know if I'm gonna go to Solitude next. Maybe Blackreach? I know that there are probably some things that I could find out in the rift.